This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. I have no voice because I was yelling, I was screaming, and you know, there were some good times in this game. There were some really bad times in this game, but the Eagles did what mattered most, and that was win the football game. But there is praise, and there are certain people that cannot be off the hook for what happened in this game. But it was a tough battle. The Eagles made it harder on themselves. And there's a lot to talk about here with the New Orleans Saints and the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's get straight into it. A killer buried, but not dead. Darren, we better turn around. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. I hope everyone's doing well today. I hope everyone's going to now enjoy their week because the Eagles beat the New Orleans Saints 15-12 to in a really big up-and-down game. Really, one side was worse and then finally got the snaps where it really mattered, and then the other side was flawless, determined, just a strong unit, and we have a lot to discuss going into this game. A lot going in there. The Eagles have not beat the Saints since 2007 in their dome. And before we get into all of that, this video is sponsored by BetUS. And this is a word from our sponsors at BetUS. If I'm the betting man and I am and you're rooting for the Philadelphia Eagles, this is the redemption year for Jalen Hurts. This is the year we get the bad taste out of our mouths from last season. If I'm going all in, ride or die with a Super Bowl and bringing that Lombardi trophy back to Philadelphia for a second time, you need to go to BetUS. And I'm not wasting any time with it. I'm putting 500 down as the risk and getting 7,000 back at the end of the year because this offense is going to be explosive. This defense by Vic Fan. It's going to be dynamic. A 150% deposit bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000 with code YouTube150. Click the link in the description below. Start betting and start winning. All right, guys. Well, here we go. This game to me, okay, and I wasn't feeling good going to this game at all. You know, the Saints were scoring, you know, what, 90, what, 91, 92 points the last couple of games. But let me tell you, if there was a part of this game that really shined the most, it was the defense for the Philadelphia Eagles, okay? Vic Fangio made his adjustments with this team, with this squad. And I got to say, wow, the defensive line got pressure. Bryce Huff literally was benched. He had eight, he was in for what, 17, 18 snaps the whole entire game. And he did not do anything. Not an assisted tackle, not a tackle. He might have got some water on the sideline, maybe was the towel boy for a little bit, but he did absolutely nothing. So what I saw was they started to get some five man fronts. They actually started using Zach Bawn on the edge a little bit, and they were moving him around and they were getting pressure and they were doing such a great job. Um, Jalen Carter was the highest graded defensive player of this team. Okay. Jalen Carter. Wow. Okay. Um, they were running stunts. I mean, I saw a Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter stunt. When have the Eagles done that with Vic Fangio this year? I haven't seen much of it. I don't even think I've seen one snap of an actual stunt with those guys. Oh, my God, man. Just fantastic. Josh Sweat was getting pressure. I mean, Brandon Graham was getting pressure. I mean, there was just pressure everywhere. But those DTs, that defensive line as a unit, getting in Derek's car, Derek Carr's face, uh, you know, just making it so much easier for the linebacker fits, the linebackers. And really, I, mean, I to be honest with you, I think the worst plays the defense really had in this game, I think was the first half. They gave up a third and eight and a third and nine. And those were like the biggest plays they gave up. They gave up, obviously, a bigger one later on. Sean, Sean uh, Shaq Bond was in coverage on Alvin Kamara later on in the second half. But it was good coverage, but a great catch by Alvin Kamara. Uh, that, 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 that guy is a, a very, very good player. We all know that what Alvin Kamara could do, what that run game has meant to them the last couple weeks. But they were all getting after it. 
I mean, Jordan Davis had a sack in this game. Jalen Carter was just a menace to society. Jalen Carter played with a different edge in this game. I don't know. It, it just seemed very different. And I got to say this to those crappy that 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 crappy fan base over in New Orleans, okay, with those dirty ass players that they have over there. And to be honest with you, I consent him acting the way he acted. And honestly, Nick got in his face. It made no sense to me why he did that. Because Nick can't really talk. Remember in 22 against Kansas City when he stopped in the tunnel is like, oh what what now, Kansas City fans? Like, I don't know how you could tell this Jalen Carter's been doing this. Okay, since he's been at Georgia. Okay, there's plenty of video on him just trolling the other team, pissing off Tyron Matthew. I just absolutely loved it. And they tried to stop him from doing I mean, look at Clint Hurt. He's had the defensive line coach holding him. I mean, it's fan, it's they love it. They absolutely love it. And that's what Jalen Carter did in this game. And he was just a menace. There was a lot of dirt. The, there was a lot of dirty hits in this game. We we all know this. Jalen Carter was getting grabbed, held, shoved, you name it. After the whistle to every player, the 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 big push to slay out out of bounds. Devontae Smith getting hit in the back of the helmet, uh, getting spit on uh, in this game as well. Which I thought another thing that was absolutely ridiculous. Um, then players kind of finding out later on that that's really what happened. Um, but the defense were holding, they were literally holding, holding the saints to three points for a long time, six point. I mean, nothing. I mean, the defense was making stop after stop after spot. I mean, Zach Bond had what? Nine tackles in this Zach Bond. My God, the, 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 the value that he has, how did they find this guy? He, as, as a role player with the Saints and had a couple picks last year, like where did he come from um, just having another great game? I, I just think the adjustments were just so much better, and we looked a lot more tighter. Yes, we did lose um, Slay later in the game. Ringo kind of got in there. He got picked on a little bit later in the game, um, so I thought that was really good. N'Kobe Dean had some good tackles in this game. As a unit, because you have pressure, and you know there was more out Outside containment. Once Bryce Huff was benched, and really it was more Brandon Graham, Josh Sweat, and they were giving more reps to some of the other guys. And it's a shame because you're paying a guy $17 million a year. We know what Bryce Huff is not doing. So 17 snaps didn't even get a tackle at this point. Two assisted tackles in three games. It's uh, it's obviously very embarrassing. Okay. Um, to me, yeah, it, I mean, they just they held on for so long. OK, my issue right now, right now, um, and I've talked about this defense enough today because I be I have to give Vic Fangio the utmost respect. Quinion Mitchell, I'd uh, uh, that big deflection in the end zone. I thought another quality, really good game. Another test for Quinion Mitchell. Fantastic. I couldn't have been more happy with everything that went on in this game defensively. Without this defense, this team wouldn't have survived anything. If this was last year's defense, they probably would have scored over 40 to 50 points on us, put a 50 burger on us pretty damn easily um, in this game. But the big problem I have in this game is this offense, okay? The usage of Saquon Barkley didn't really, I mean, really not much. I mean, not even. I don't even know how many snaps. He, I think he had 17 yards in the first half. I mean, it, it was bad. It was really bad. First series, they got nothing. Not even one run play. Uh, the keepers, the same crap we've been watching. Tight end screens. And yes, Dallas Goddard. Oh, Jesus. You could tell between sequences when Dallas Goddard had these big, I mean, 170 yards, 10 catches. I mean, that's the best in his career as of right now and couldn't be happier uh, about it. Now, Grant Calcaterra, I don't think, is the best blocker because he blocked on that fake tush-push handoff um, and had a couple more blocks that he just really fumbled at that point. Um, you didn't have A.J. Brown in this game, so I thought distribution on a couple of series weren't you know, I thought we're pretty good. I mean, you wouldn't think Jalen Hurts had a bad game looking at his statistics, 29, 38, 311 yards, okay, and an interception was sacked four times. I mean, you would thought they would have scored three, four touchdowns in this game with those kind of amount of stats that you have, but not the case because I think every time the Eagles had somewhat of a good, 
I, the offense was starting to roll a little bit. It seemed like there was always a penalty that really dead the whole entire play. Um, Nick Sirianni is really my biggest issue. I don't know what this guy is doing. Um, his post-game press conference, I know he was pretty much apologizing, blaming it on himself. I am sorry. Some of these sequences look like it's just Sirianni. Some of these sequences look like it's Kellen Moore. The mesh concept where Dallas Goddard pretty much got open and, 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 and caught the ball and pretty much got that ball inside the five-yard line. I mean, you know, these fake pick plays and getting guys open and moving guys. I mean, that's all Kellen Moore. It has to be, Okay. What is up with Sirianni not taking the points? It's it's just getting to a point now. Four decisions. You'd rather Jake Elliott to kick a sixty year old a sixty yard field goal, okay, than punt the ball. So you know you don't give them the field position, and yet another two times, probably more, okay, probably three, they could have scored some easy layups, easy layups to put some points on the board. Yet making it complicated for your offense really Jalen Hurts didn't really start playing well until that fourth quarter to be honest with you that's when he kind of rose up a little bit and he looked more comfortable like I thought the three quarters I don't think he played that great I thought he had some good passes here and there but there were some different plays that they put in that were kind of like they were supposed to surprise us but didn't go anywhere like the read option kind of keeper, like kind of Jalen Hurts hiking the ball, moving to his right, Saquon on the little pitch, like weird plays that just didn't go anywhere. There's, It's just not consistent enough. Okay, I was fighting with people in the chats. Yeah, like, oh, all the, the play is correct, but the execution's wrong. Nah, it's both. It's, it's, it's when you don't get points on the board, you pay the price on showing how inconsistent you can actually be because I can't tell from one coordinator to the other when I'm talking about Sirianni and Kellen Moore who's really calling the shots in Philadelphia. And I'm sorry, I feel like I'm seeing two different quarterbacks at times, two different offenses at times, okay? It, it is no excuse. Like, like, Nick Sirianni is getting on my nerves. Like, I am, I am pretty much wanting him out of the door as of now. I... I don't know if you give him another week to fix this, but I will allow it, okay? I'm I'm in no control of what they do. I'm a fan at the end of the day, just like you are. But that was really pathetic the way Nick is really holding this team back. He is holding the team back. He is holding the talent that is in this offense back because I thought there was some good distribution. I thought they had one or two series where they really started distributing the ball very nicely. You didn't have A.J. Brown in this game. You lost Devontae Smith in the fourth quarter. You lost Lane Johnson and Mekhi Becton on the right side. So you had Fred Johnson, Tyler Steen. I thought, I thought they played pretty damn well for a first game just walking in there. Obviously, Eli Ricks came in for Slay and got picked on a little bit. Um, then they had that big penalty uh, that's, that put them back to the 46 of their side of the field. So that was a big penalty there. And the Eagles made yet, uh, the defense made yet another stop um, on that drive. But Nick, I, I just, I have no answers for this guy anymore. I don't think he's putting his quarterback in the right spot to win football games. I don't think he's making Hurts succeed. And obviously, Jalen Hurts is struggling. The one thing that Jalen Hurts did well in this game entirely, which I have to respect that of the utmost with him, I thought he stayed in the pocket a lot more in this game. I thought he was... I thought he really... I know I know he threw into... He threw uh, another pick in the end zone. I get it. Um, but he stuck in the pocket a lot more. And then there were some runs that he had. I thought he was running at full speed, and he actually looked really smooth, really good. Um, and I was like, wow, this... this You know, breaking tackles. I mean, he, he looked pretty good. I think... I don't know how many rushing yards he had for the day. Um, but, you know, when there was opportunities there, you know, it was a great thing. Um, but, you know... Saquon Barkley, the first half, non-existent. Really, when you had a good play to get the juices rolling with the offense, you get like a 9, 10. He averaged, I, I don't know what it was. It was like 9 point something yards of carry. I mean, insane, dude. Insane. Okay? Devontae Smith gets hurt in the fourth quarter. Okay? I think it was the fourth quarter. And then it seemed like the Eagles were just pissed. The players were pissed. 
One play later, Saquon Barkley runs for a 65-yard touchdown. It seems like this running back is bailing out the offense, and you know for a fact this defense bailed out the offense entirely, entirely did it, okay? And I just love that there. We it seems like the defense just has so much grit and self-urgency and just Chauncey is another player. He gave up that, that touchdown to Olave. He's got his eyes caught on the inside a little bit and got beat to the outside by, by Olave, the back left side of the end zone. But, you know, this is a game where he really wanted to play because this was the team that traded him, that didn't really believe in him, okay? And he made it known that <laughs> they are trash and they will never talk. They will never think they're the best ever again because they didn't. Look, Derek Carr only passed the ball 15 times in the first. At really, he only played against Dallas. He only threw the ball 15 times. I mean, just think, only 15 times. So once you're shutting the run down and you have a five man front now and you're getting pressure, yeah. I mean, look, originally, originally when you have four guys on the line, you know, you're doubling Jalen Carter, you're doubling Jordan Davis and your edge guys with Bryce Huff being there. There's no pressure at all. Adding that Zach Bond factor to the defense, making that a five-man front. I thought uh, Jordan Davis had a sack. I thought Thomas Booker had a couple good snaps. Morrow, Jomo Milton Williams blew up a play. I mean, it was just, man, this is the potential I see. And the defense gets all 100% of the props, okay? But I thought... The Eagles fought through it after losing Devontae Smith, Lane Johnson, already not having A.J. Brown. I mean, they still scored on the Saints. They still got a score up. So I thought that was really good. Like, Hurt's statistics are good in this game, but when it came to those moments, they'd get to the other side of the field. They'd be very close. It takes one penalty to drop them back, and then they do two stupid plays. I still think this... Playbook needs to be changed. Nick, I, I I don't even want to give this guy. I like seriously, he shouldn't be involved in nothing but sit on that sideline. I don't I don't even think the Eagles benefit from him being around, to be honest with you. What is the main constant with this team the last few years that seems like everything's staying the same? Because who's the what's the one change that has never changed? It's been Nick Sirianni. That is the one change. Um, you know what I mean? So if if I see multiple coordinators for multiple years and the head coach is getting no flack for it, and trust me, he's going to get a lot of flack this week beyond. Had some things to say at the press conference talking about that it's all on him, that he didn't prepare, that he's not preparing or how he should be preparing. And not being involved in the offensive scheme and making those judgment calls, what, were those layup points, field goals that you should have took? Were just what were those analytical decisions? Your analytical chart says this that you know the calculations. Yeah, no, it's not the case. It's it's literal stupidity, stupidity. This coach is this this offense is way way too way too good to be in a situation like this. And if the defense keeps playing like this and the offense can just make some changes from a coaching standpoint going forward. I mean, you lost Britton Covey to a shoulder injury too. So now you're going to be down A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. Usually these, these concussions end up in mandatory one-game misses. So potentially you could be losing three big players to your offense. Paris Paris Campbell, sorry, just burped. Paris Campbell, I ate a lot of meatball parmesan today. Uh, Paris Campbell had a couple catches. Britton Covey, they actually threw a forward pass to him in open space one-on-one, -on -one, and he ran by and got the first down. Like I like that they got more players involved in this offense. Johnny Wilson got involved on a catch, which was great. He had another one that he actually dropped. It was, it was a, a contested catch. Hertz actually threw it perfectly in his hands. So, like... There are just hurts moments in this offense because of the certain play calling coming from the certain coordinator that looks so bland and dry. And then in the fourth quarter to like the start of the third when they started running with Saquon and then they stopped. But 
you know, Gainwell coming into these games, Gainwell is used way too much in that first half and in the second half at times, too. They're throwing the ball to Gainwell. They're running with Gainwell. I mean, God damn, dude. Like, why? What is your infatuation with Gainwell? And I, you know what it is? It's Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni loves Gainwell. He's even on kick returns. Like, why is he playing? Why is he even on kick returns? Like, what? 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 T- is he another player when I when I when I wipe my eyes, make sure I'm not dreaming or think I'm seeing something else? Like what who do they think that he is as a player? That's that's really the big question going forward. Okay. So I had time to calm down since the game. And you're like, I I just think Nick, if Nick doesn't stay out of things, he's gotta go. Because they will lose more, they will lose more games. The defense will not be able to save them every freaking game. It won't happen that way. It never will happen that way. That's where I'm at right now. Um, glad the Eagles won this game. We're going to be doing more videos this week. But, man, the MVPs of this game, I would say, yeah, Jalen Hurts had a clutch moment at the end. Saquon Barkley after the Devontae Smith injury. Jalen Carter, the secondary, the linebackers. Reed Blankenship gets the pick. Reed Blankenship. You know what I mean? Cooper DeGene better be ready next week. I mean, Reed Blankenship, man, another pick for him this year. God, we need more turnovers. We need to garnish more turnovers and do a lot more, okay? Um, like I said, the, like the offense is still sputtering in sequences, really bad, vanilla, dry. And then when you actually have a chance to score three points, you go for it. But then later in the game, you want to kick a 60-yard field goal over punting the ball and giving them f- and risking giving them field position? I don't get this coach, bro. It's holding us back. You're not winning a playoff game like this. And this was a – you faced a pretty good team. Okay, Derek Carr ain't the best quarterback, but there's good coaching behind it. And that run game was dangerous, and you hindered that, and you stopped that. Yeah, Kamar got his yards here and there. Um. But you know what? The defense kept us in, kept us in, kept us in. Tough, 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 tough. Vic Fangio, tough. That's what it is. Man, didn't think the defense would play like that. But this offense and that head coach, Hurts and Sirianni combined, is it's worrisome, okay? And on top of everything else, I remember when, when, when Hurts went to the sideline to talk to Sirianni, Hertz isn't even looking at him while while Sirianni's talking to him. There is no eye. There is no connection. Like they're not even. He's not even looking at Sirianni. Like I feel like like inside. I feel like Hertz is like tired of this guy and the things that he involves himself with this offense. There is no way Kel Moore is the full. There is no way that Kel Moore comes here and all of a sudden, oh my God, things look so similar to last year. It's not, guys. So I'm going to rest my voice and rest everything inside. Let me know what you guys think about this game. What were your highlights to this game? What did you like the most? Do you think Nick should get fired? Because I'm tired of that. That that man is going to ruin this, this. He's going to ruin this golden era of this roster of what we have. Unfortunately, that's the case. The defensive side of the ball, I feel like we figured it out. I feel like they just got to keep it going. But offensively, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. I don't care if there was a clutch moment at the end of the game. I don't care if there were some good sequences. I've seen Jalen Hurts comfortable in this game, and he looks amazing. And then most of this game, he looked horrible. Not throwing middle of the field. And then certain plays intricate and crossers and all this weird mesh concept and fake picks for guys to run into each other for this guy to be oh there's there's just something's going on here and someone needs to lay off of and let one man control it all the eagles win 15 to 12 they got one more week before the bye tampa bay so you guys let me know. I want to thank BetUS for sponsoring this video. I want to thank everybody for joining the live stream as well. Um, and, and really uh, thank you for everybody that joined. We'll be streaming on Tuesday. We'll be doing a lot of videos this week on a lot of things. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. 
we got it. And uh, there's a lot of positive things to talk about going forward. So uh, I think we're on a good start. I didn't think I would say that in this game. And that's just me being realistic. But um, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys on the next one. Shakes what falls on. Peace out. Peace.